Welcome Wargamers to the most advanced live battle simulator created to date. This is Greg Siebold aka Winshear, first time video editor for Battlefield 3 content and also a writer for Wargamer.com. This series I want to uh, expose you to Battlefield 3 if you haven't already and introduce you to the classes and overall feel of this game in addition to explain some tactics. This is an incredible game, it's a live chess game uh, in action and you have to know how to play this game effectively to be a dominating force in it. Various ca classes we go through here, dozens of weapons to choose from, and the assault class alone here detailing several different weapons. And with each weapon, you can load out your weapon to change its characteristics to meet the needs of every battle uh, in particular. Some maps you'll be fighting on are close range engagements, some maps are longer range engagements. You can equip your weapons to uh, address those situations appropriately. Um, putting on tack lights, putting on suppressors, grips, changing your sights, even things such as your camo in terms of your appearance has a great advantage and affects your gameplay on the Battlefield 3 environment and greatly changes how the enemy can acquire you visually whenever you're uh, running and gunning or trying to maintain a stealthy profile. The first class I want to cover here is the Assault class. There's four classes in the game, Assault, Engineer, Support, and Recon. All various classes have their their uh, distinct advantages. The Assault class here, I'm having an underslung rail with an M320 grenade launcher. Pretty much your front line, gun to gun, head to head engagement um, type class. We have defibrillators to revive squad mates, and we also have med packs if we want to give out health. Um, but pretty much ha the Assault class has the most advanced weapons in the games in terms of uh, rifles. Uh, you have everything from M16s, M14s, G3s, F2000s, literally just multiple, multiple types of weapons to, to change your type gameplay. But I want to detail this is not just a first person shooter. This is literally a battle simulator. So you got to know how to play smartly in this game to capitalize and be effective. Right here in this type position here I'm always burst firing my weapon to increase its effectiveness at long range engagements like there taking on a sniper here and that's that bright light you saw was the scope of the sun glimmering on his uh, zoom scope so I was able to acquire him a little bit easier here but right here in this position gives me huge tactical advantage because I'm using my camouflage up against this foliage behind me so it's difficult for the enemy to acquire me visually in addition I've got these concrete barriers in front of me for added support and cover in the event I acquire uh, or have any kind of explosions or or bullet firings towards my direction you never want to stay too long in one place in this game, so you're constantly moving. And, uh, you know, try and keep in, in mind where the enemy is going to be coming for you. And sw switching your sidearms here is another tactic you can do to kind of increase your firepower there in um, difficult situations. Moving on to the next class, Engineer class, we have a lot of shoulder mounted uh, rocket launchers. The great thing about Battlefield 3 is that we can destroy cover, we can destroy buildings, or eliminate cover. Everything's destructible. The Frostbite engine in this game is the most advanced gaming engine created to date. The physics in it are incredibly lifelike. You have to count for bullet drop. You have to account for suppressive fire effects. The graphics, whether you're on PC or console, are unmatched to date. And you will be blown away by playing this game. Engineer class has various weapons as well. Each class has their own unique, distinct weapons. And right here I'm using the Scar-H with a, a suppressor equipped, which in this situation is giving me a huge tactical advantage because with the suppressor on board, every bullet I fire stays off the radar in terms of the lower, lower left-hand mini-map that you're looking at. See all those red dots? Those are enemy, enemy uh, t players firing right now. So anytime they're spotted or they're firing, they appear in their map. But whenever I have a suppressor on my weapon, I stay off the grid. So they, they don't know I'm here. And as a result, I can flank their team throw a massive amount of uh, firepower downrange and take out a lot of enemies in these types of situations. So it's about using your weapons effectively and loading them out appropriately to give you a tactical advantage. Moving on to the support class. Support class is pretty much your light machine gun type classes. Right here I'm in a uh, jeep and uh, laying on the, some fire with this F-35. Watch this guy eject and he hops into a tank. So now I'm in a situation where I want to use my class's tactics, my advantage. My loadout on, on um, support class is, is C4 packet. C4 is great for taking out tanks and vehicles. But obviously I've got a distance uh, limitation here between me and that tank. So I can't just throw C4 at him, I've got to get close to him. So uh, I'm, I'm trying to determine what I can do here to get to that tank quickly so I can throw some C4 in this little buggy 
get in it, drive it to this tank, bail out of it, and then detonate my C4 to get the kill on this tank. So this is a classic example of how you want to use your equipment that you have in each class specific um, category to your advantage. But the types of weapons you'll see in support class are heavier type machine guns with large, larger magazine capacities. Here's a new type of weapon that just became a release in new DLC content, the L86A2. Incredible weapon, high magazine capacity, about 60 rounds in a clip. And that allows me to, to throw a lot of firepower downrange and take out multiple enemies without having to sacrifice time to reload in this game. Because time's everything in this game. The more time you spend reloading or running around or wasting uh, is more of an opportunity for the enemy to take advantage of you. And here I use tactics again to flank around the enemy using my weapon strengths to my advantage. And I always take an advantage if I can to shoot an enemy in the back as opposed to shooting him face to face. Last class uh, here is a recon class. There's really two big ways you can play this class, either passively or aggressively. I choose the latter. I choose to play this class aggressively, but there's there's key there's key equipment here that you can use to your advantage. Typically, people that run recon want to keep their range and use high power, high caliber weapons to snipe at long range. I do the opposite. I pull out a shotgun and use my my equipment here. This is a respawn beacon. It allows us to spawn anywhere on the map. Uh, behind enemy lines, wherever that is, you know, once we die, we can we can come back right on that beacon. The other piece of equipment is a tugs or the MAV. It's like a motion detector sensor, and I'll put that down right here, and it allows me to acquire instantly where the motion is on the mini map here, lower left hand corner. I see multiple enemies in here, and then I can go in there and charge in there, instantly understand where the enemies are in a, in relation to that tugs equipment. So in terms of equipment alone. The recon class has some of the most powerful uh, reconnaissance type equipment in the game. Knowing where the enemy is, knowledge is power in this game, and that greatly increases your survivability and your effectiveness to flank the enemy and use that to your advantage. So I can see here, I know after putting that piece of equipment down the tugs again, I'll put it down right here. Now I'm instantly I can see where the mass enemies are on this map, this is Operation Metro. So now I'm going to try to flank this team. But again, I don't want to give away my position before I get in here, so pull out a suppressed pistol in this situation because I don't want to shoot this guy with a shotgun or else alert the, the entire team to my position. So by quietly disposing of this enemy, now I can switch to my close quarter shotgun and wipe out the whole team. And that's just another example of how you want to play smartly in this game, play on the fly. And you're constantly developing tactics, objectives, and strategy instantaneously as you play this game. A high high amount of uh, effort in this game is devoted to teamwork. You're constantly communicating with your team via microphone and developing strategies and addressing threats completely on the fly as you win a real battle. Here I am the chopper and a po uh, the pilot in the attack chopper that is. Pull off a quick triple kill there. Reassess threats back to position Bravo here. This is Operation Firestorm. And start acquiring land-based vehicles as a, a chopper pilot. Chopper's incredibly powerful in this game. Now in the tank here, tank's incredibly devastating too. These last two clips, I just want to detail briefly the vehicles in this game because they are game changers. But every vehicle, just like every piece on a chessboard, has a, has its strengths and limitations. And any piece on the board is capable of taking out any other piece on the board. And no single vehicle has the advantage over any other vehicle. As long as you play your vehicle and your weapon strengths and weaknesses to their limitation, you'll do very well in this game. Right here I'm locking onto enemy tank with uh, with a CITV station. I'm using guided shells. I'm using my main turret. I'm using smoke. And right here I slowed this down a little bit. You can also see that air-to-ground uh, missile that came down from a, from a uh, aircraft on our team. So it's a very dynamic environment. There's just too much to describe in just one video. But as I produce videos, I want to expose you to this game and describe how you need to play tactically and use strategy to succeed in this game. Yes, there's a lot of, um, of hand-eye coordination involved with this game. Depending on what platform you play, you can either play on, on PC or console. Either way, it's incredibly challenging in a lot of ways. It takes time to, you know, get the uh, control scheme down and understand, you know, how shooters and 
all these vehicles work. But once you get a, a fundamental concept and understanding of how to play this game, really what you'll find yourself doing in this game is it's, it's not so much it's not so much the uh, the hand eye skill that wins in this game is 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 your brain. I always say that you know the worst player in the world can beat the best player in the world if the best player in the world doesn't use tactics wisely or if, you know basically if you make a mistake in this game you will be punished for it. So constantly having to think on the fly is a great uh, rewarding uh, skill and advantage and something you really enjoy in this game. It's, uh, it's unlike anything you'll ever experience playing any other game out there. Um, it's a lot of fun, ex particularly, uh, of course I'm only showing multiplayer gameplay here, but this is what uh, this is what the future of gaming is. This is the best game produced to date, and I hope to bring you guys more uh, tactics, detailing, strategies, tips, and future gaming. Thanks for watching, guys. This is Winshear.